Welcome to Real Bass Lessons. Today I thought we ought to get back to some Motown, some of that Jamerson sound, okay? But we're not going to learn a song today. We're going to work on a rhythm. The most important part of a, obviously any groove is that rhythm. Now I'm not going to talk about, you know, how to get that feel and dig in and, and that kind of stuff. I'm going to talk about practicing rhythm. In this book here, um, What Makes Motown Bass Motown, one of the chapters is titled Rhythm Excels. And I know that this uh, can be challenging for some people because they think they already got it. <laughs> they say, I can play good rhythm. Well, sure, most people can. But the challenge is, is learning some specific rhythms that are commonly found in Motown and be able to, being able to execute those perfectly anywhere on the bass and all keys. And yes, you need to practice rhythm. See, the reason there's this uh, sort of misconception with learning and practicing rhythm, unlike pitch, is if I go boop, boop, ba da ba 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 da boop, boop, ba da ba you can sing that back immediately. I mean, just immediately. Anyone can do that. Now, if we add pitches, that makes it a lot harder. But when we execute it on the bass, that's a whole other story. And also, we need to work on rhythm excels, little rhythms that are common in a, a Motown. So when you get ready to create a bass line, you don't have to go, what do I do? What do I do? No, we need to practice those rhythm excels so much that they become part of our vocabulary, what we play when it's ready, set, go. Okay, I've got some real simple ones outlined here in the book, and I'll just play a few of them we'll work with. I want to show you how to work with them, okay? Here's the first one I have written. Three and four and... Simple enough, right? Now, before you say, Jim, I can already do that. Well, I know you can, but let's try it doing something like working it around the cycle of fourths. Here we go. Two, three, four. Again, you go, I know, I can hear that. It sounds simple. Yeah, get your bass out and play along with me. You want to start recording yourself using the metronome or a little drum track and hear the accuracy. Because see, if we're only going to play this note forever, or maybe a big open E, that's one thing. But lots of Motown tunes move to E flat and to G flat and to A flat and to D and to F. We need to practice our rhythm in these different spots so no, no chord makes us stumble. So we can do this anywhere on the bass in any key, and moving from one to the other. See, people often mistake this in practicing. They hear something, they go, well, I already know that. Well, no one, it usually is up here, not in your fingers. And then when they play it once, they go, I can do it. Well, yeah, but music doesn't move like that. Some music, you just sit and play a big E forever, and that's cool. But most music, there's chord changes going by. We have to move around. So that's the challenge of playing rhythm and moving. It's sort of like a, a walking and chewing gum or doing this kind of stuff. You know, it takes a while to get it together, but it's simple once you do. So let me get my little drum track going here and let's just do that same exact rhythm, play along with me, around the cycle of force. There's my groove. One, two, ready, go. Imagine being able to play that solid with everything you do. It takes practice. Uh, it's real easy. Students, uh, you know, they always want to play the cool stuff, the hip stuff, the fancy stuff, the complicated stuff. Well, I guess that's fine, but none of it makes any sense if it isn't just grooving like rock solid. So doesn't it make sense we should work on some fundamentals? And if you think you already have all these fundamentals down, great, you don't need this lesson. But I dare you to try some of these things I'm showing you. And you can always make them more solid. Okay, let's look at the next one here. The next one goes three, four. Mm -hmm. 
That's it. Let's play it a couple times, just by itself. Three, four, loop it. Good, cycle four, let's do it like this. Okay, be sure and play those spaces in there too. Here we go. Play along with me. Three, one, two, three, four. actually work with my students and we'll play a little groove like that with something that simple five and six and seven minutes non-stop if you get bored <laughs> playing a simple bass line and making it the groove just get deeper and deeper and deeper you're probably playing the wrong instrument man most people get excited who play the bass and love that sound and feel the bass just that repetition of I'm oh, sorry yeah Sure, moving around the bass. I started in a different spot there on purpose, but using that cycle as a as a good, good uh, you know guide and a good uh, map to follow. Okay, let's go to the next one. Now the next one involves a sixteenth, so what would be like this? One, two, three, four. Play with me. Three and four and. Here we go. Cycle of fours. One, two, three, four. the top is we're just back to the place where we started okay let's go to the next one the next one's like this it's similar but different cycle of fours ready two three four There was one or two in there that I was a little bit weak on. Again, I dare you to put something on like this and do it over and over and over. You do it about six or eight times to the cycle and it'll get so hypnotic, you won't want to stop. You'll go, man, that's the groove, that's the groove. You create synergy with that little play along. And when you get to where you can play this simple, but yet perfectly solid, man, everybody will want to play with you. I heard a friend of mine say one time, when you're playing simple enough and solid enough, you get those compliments from, from people that say, you work with them and they say, man, I don't know what it is about your playing, but you just make me sound good. Yes, thank you. That's because I'm just laying down a groove, real simple. Okay. But again, we're working around the cycle of force so we can learn to do this all over the instrument. Let's go on to the next one here now. What is this next one? Two, three, four. No, we already did that one. Let me turn the page. <laughs> here we go. Two, very similar but a little different. Three, four. Cycle of force. Get your bass. Play. Two, one, two, three, four. Back to the top. 
is is these rhythms that I've chosen for here and there's lots more but these just ones that I've identified here they're rhythms that happen in tons and tons and tons of Jamerson licks I mean let's just analyze that for a second uh, ba -da -ba -ba. typical or or uh, yeah there we go or uh, sure there's all sorts of pitch sets that go with it what I've done here is I've isolated just some of those kernel you know those little essence rhythms that happen lots and lots and lots of times that's just been I, I can just do that and I've done that because I've listened to Jamerson tons I've transcribed it written it down looked at it taught it sure so these you can you can steal these and use them and when you get the rhythms down solid enough I promise you'll hear some of the pitch sets besides <laughs> there's a chapter in the book on pitch sets let's do the next one the next one let's see oh it's this one here three four <laughs> Hey, listen to this. <laughs> I can hear that. Or oh, how about the? Let's just stay with our pitch for the moment, though. Three. So we isolate the rhythm. Understand? If you break things down to where you get rid of a whole bunch of the variables and a whole bunch of the stuff, you get down here, get down here, you get this little bitty small thing you're practicing. It'll make it stronger. I know. I see lots of lessons with guys teaching and trying to learn a really complicated thing, and it sounds cool when you play it. But we need to break them down to little bite-sized, chewable pieces. The challenge is, is you, the student, just sometimes has a, have a hard time going, does that really sound good? Is that really hip? Well, yeah, it's because we, we, we've taken away all this icing and stuff. Here's an example I once heard. If you look at this painting and all you see is a one-inch circle, the whole thing's covered in paper, there's a one-inch circle, circle cut out, you have no idea what the painting is. You rip the paper off and you go, whoa, that's a cool Van Gogh painting. But we can't see it with just the little one-inch circle. No matter where it's at on the screen, you know, on the picture, if we only see that much. So that's what we're doing here. When we're isolating things, we're making them small and we're working on little kernels. And that's good education. One step at a time, one little kernel at a time, and we put them together. Now the trick is, is you have to practice each one of those little steps oh so much that then when you add another variable on top, it doesn't screw that up. And that's what people tend to do. I just recently posted, uh, what, four, five lessons on learning some uh, technical things on Jaya Steps. And I guarantee you, uh, more and more people just skip that earlier stuff and, and, and looked at the last one. You know how I can tell? The amount of views. Folks, if you didn't spend more time on those early ones, I promise you can't play those later ones. And if you can, we well, don't need the lesson. But you need to spend the majority of your time on the fundamentals. By the way, what is too solid? Hmm? <laughs> you never want to move away from the basics. So let's isolate that rhythm again. What rhythm was that? No. Three, three and four and that was it. Here we go, cyclo force. Two, three, four. Oh, I screwed up. <laughs> One, two, and three. There it is. This one a little bit harder. There's a lot of offbeats. Boo da 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 da. Sure, there's a whole bunch of offbeats in there. Good. Let's do one more here. What do we got here? Oh, I like this one over here. How about this one? Cycle of force. Here we go. Two. Got the idea 
Now, I'm not going to uh, add a bunch of stuff on right now to make it sound hipper or feel better. No, man, if we can just get the groove with roots, learn, the, learn to play them on the fingerboard, I promise that'll strengthen your playing. And I can't emphasize enough. I want to repeat what I said earlier. Man, what's too solid, huh? If you think that you can already play this and it's too solid, well, you're kidding, some, you're kidding yourself or uh, you just got tons and tons of gigs and making lots of money, and I hope so. But the point is, is most all of us can benefit by just working on our... I think that's one I did earlier. Sure, just play in that groove. And again, play it over and over and over. Here's a good little, uh, um, you know, goal for you. Learn one of these phrases and play it 10 times around the cycle of fourth, nonstop without making one single mistake, and record it and listen to it. And if it doesn't just make you go, yeah, start tapping your foot, getting into it, well, you're not solid enough yet. And if it does, kill her. Go on to another one now. Okay? That's the idea. Um, I think I'll just play one to finish off with, okay? Matter of fact, maybe I'll improvise just a touch using one of these and going around the cycle of force. So here's my groove. I'll start. Two, three, four. Sure, you see what I did? I just took that rhythm. Oh, let me stop this thing here. It's going crazy on me. Oh, I think that little ding opened something up. I just took that rhythm and added a few different pitches. You work on those rhythms first, though, okay? Fire it up.